Hola, welcome to another Spanish lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the Spanish alphabet and the pronunciation of the letters in the alphabet. Let's get started. El abecedario. And we're looking at pronunciación. Now I want you to picture the Spanish alphabet being a classroom. And in this classroom, you have 30 students. Yes, the alphabet for Spanish has 30 letters. In this classroom, you have 30 students. And as a typical classroom goes, you're going to have students of mixed personalities, mixed abilities. And so in this classroom of 30 students, we have some who are going to be little angels. They're going to do what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to do it. Others are going to be a little bit more rambunctious, so we're going to have to be keeping our eyes on them. But in looking at pronunciation of the Spanish letters, it's going to be a little bit like that. We're going to look at the vowels first. So the same five vowels that we know in English, same five vowels in Spanish. So let's look at their sounds. A sounds like the A in cat. Eh sounds like the E in let or a short A sound as in in the word late. But not as drawn out as that, okay? Just a short A sound. I like to think of the idea that the Spanish vowels, some of them borrow their sounds from the vowel that comes before. So if the E has a little bit of an A sound, it means that the I is going to have a little bit of an E sound. And so the I actually sounds like your double E that you will see in words like geese. Then, or O, just like your regular English O, like in the word open, and your U has borrowed from the O sound, so it's a double O, OO, like boot. So these are some of your good behaving students. We're going to take a look at some of the not so good behaving ones. Let's now move on to our consonants. Our first consonant, oops, let me change my color. I want to remain consistent. Our first consonant is going to be the letter B. We know what our consonants are, right? The letters that are not vowels. Same thing happens in Spanish, nothing has changed. Not just be because they have crossed languages doesn't mean anything is different. So B is our first consonant. And with the letter B, it sounds a little bit softer than your regular English B. So it's almost as if you're, you're not going to be B, but B, right? So in words like botella, embotellamiento, a bear. So it's not a very strong B sound. So let's write here just a very soft B sound. All right. Or next, and I'm going to put this one in, let's put him in sparkly, sparkly, because this letter here gives talking. That letter is a troublemaker. This is one of them. I'm going to put even an asterisk beside him. This is one of them that you have to keep your eye on because the letter C has two sounds. When it comes in front of the vowels A, O, and U, it has a K sound. So it has that K, K, K. But in front of the other two vowels, which would be E and I, it sounds like an S. So 
So let us um, use an example of an English word, actually. If you think about the word accident, let's pick up a different color to show some variation. If you think about the word in English, accident, look at what is happening in terms of the first C here as a K sound, the second C here as an S sound. And we've never really given things like this any thought, but it's happening in Spanish. When we look at single words, let's move this up a little bit, get some space. When we look at single words that have that C coming in front of the A, the O, or the U, let's look at some Spanish examples quickly. So we have a word like caja. So here it sounds like a K. We have a word like coco. And you hear that K sound coming out again. You have a word like cubrir. You have that K sound coming out again. But then you have words like ciego. You have that S sound coming out. You have words like suceder. You have that S sound coming out. Now look at what is happening. The rule that we just spoke about. When it comes in front of an A, it takes that K sound. Comes in front of an O, it takes that K sound. Comes in front of a U, it takes that K sound. Comes in front of an I, it takes the S sound. In front of an E, it takes the S sound as well. So C is one of them that you really have to keep your eyes on because depending on who it's hanging out with at that particular point in time, it is going to change its sound. And if you take your cue, oh, this is something I need to mention as well, which is where the word accident comes from. Sometimes you're going to have a doubling up of the letter. Let me put on the E on this because it is actually a cognate, which is one of our other lessons in another video. When you look at two C's coming together in Spanish. The first one is going to take a K sound and the second will take the S sound. So you want to pay close attention to C in that regard. Let's continue, moving this up. If you didn't quite catch that, feel free to rewind. Let's go over to the letter D. Now the letter D, Oh, lo siento, lo siento mucho. I skipped out one of our extra letters, which is the CH. And the CH sounds just like your English CH. So in words like church, same sound. No worries there. So CH, even though it's an import into the, the alphabet, CH is quite okay. The letter D is also quite okay. So D is going to sound like your regular English D. We already looked at E because that's one of our vowels. We want to take a look at the letter F. F, I wouldn't say that F is a problem child, but F has a little bit of a peculiarity that you want to know when it comes on to Spanish. So F sounds like your English F. But F, if you remember, or if you re realize that in Spanish, sorry, in English, we have a PH equivalent. And that PH converts to F in Spanish. So there's no PH that you're going to be coming across in Spanish, in Spanish words. So words that have PH in Spanish are going to be converted to F. And we're going to be looking at some of those in another topic altogether in a different video. I'm so excited about that one. That one is coming up and it's going to be good. G is another problem child. Another problem child. I should maybe put him in the same color as C 
You see how close they are in terms of how, yes. Yeah, so let, let's give G some span, sparkle, sparkle. You see how close they are in terms of their shape as well. Both have curves and all that. But G is another problem, Chad. The problem with G is he came into the class and he saw C and he saw C misbehaving when it was with particular letters. And so G said, hmm, if C can do that, I can do that too. And so G has two sounds as well. And just like C, its sounds are going to be determined by the, the vowel that comes after it. So it's going to sound like the regular English G, when it comes before O and A. So we have examples like um, the word go ma. You have that hard G sound, and you have words like gato. Again, you have that hard G sound. However, you need to maintain proper English grammar as well. It's going to sound like a very soft H or it's going to sound almost silent when it comes in front of E and I. So when you look at a word in Spanish, when you look at this word in Spanish, and you would be tempted to say general, it's not going to be general, but that G is going to sound like an H, so it's going to become general, general. So that G is gonna sound like an H. You want to look at another one. When you see this word, you're gonna be tempted to say gitano or gitano. It's actually gitano, gitano. So let me just put the notation there for you and it has an H sound. It has an H sound right there. But something is missing, right? So we have A, E, I, O. What happened to the letter U? Is it that you don't have any words in Spanish that have GU? Of course you do. But here's what happens. So it's almost as if the letter G is it's trying to be good, but then it depends on who it ends up with. Because what happens now is this. With the letter U, this is what happens with the letter G. When the U comes between. So here's what happens, right? And remember the concept of the classroom. Here's what happens. G is supposed to sound like G, goma, gato. But when it goes and it, it sits with E and I, it takes on an H sound, general, hitano. When the letter U comes, he says, hey G, what are you doing? Why do you sound like that? you're supposed to sound like a G. So when the U comes and it separates G from these miscreants, E and I, it takes back that hard G sound. So when U comes after the G, it becomes an English G again. You know, you have those friends who they are true friends and they're the ones that can really bring you back to your senses. But the U is silent. So the, G, the U, I must point out, has to come between that those two letters that G tends to be knocking head with. So it has to come between the G and the E or the G and the I. And so we have a word 
like yege. So you see the U coming in between the G and the E right there. And the G again is going to be sounding like a regular G. Yege. Yege. And so that takes care of the letter G. Then you have the very quiet students. And so here we have one of them, H. H hardly, if ever, makes a sound. So H is very silent. Hardly heard. You know, in the islands, we have this way of emphasizing our H's. We hardly hear the H in Spanish. I is, of course, one of your other vowels. J. You see, because H decided that it did not want to speak, J speaks for the H. So J sounds like a soft English H. K is a very funny letter. I would want to call K almost like an exchange student because you don't find many Spanish words starting with the letter K. And the words that do start with K tend to be borrowed from other languages. But when you do find them, it sounds just like your regular English K. L. And you're going to find that the majority of this class, they know how to behave, it's just a few. Just those few miscreants that you have to look out for. The L sounds like your English L. Then we have one of our special letters. Now, because this one is a special import, you have to treat it nicely. It's one of our visitors, so we have to treat it nicely, okay? So the double L is going to take on, a, it's not going to be, uh, it's going to take on a different sound. So in some regions, it sounds like a Y, like your English Y. So for example, that is why you will hear persons say, for this particular verb, Yamo, not lamo, but yamo. Let's think of the animal. Yama. In some regions, so in some regions it will sound like a J. So sometimes if you're listening to some songs, I like to listen to reggaeton a lot, and you will he hear definitely when they are pronouncing the double L sound, and it sounds like a J. So it depends on the region that you're listening to or the region that you're from, that you will hear the Y sound versus the J sound. How I tend to teach it, I teach it with the Y sound. The letter M, again, one of our goody two shoes, sounds like the English M. The N, just the same. Like I said, most of these students, they know how to behave. They're coming from good homes. Sounds like your English N. Then we have one of our other special imports. I want to treat visitors nicely when they come around. So we have what we call Enye. And that thing on the top, that little curvy thing, is called tilde. And what it does is it gives 
and invisible, and I say invisible because you will not see this written after the Enye, but it gives an invisible eye sound after the N. And that is why when we say Espanol, not Espanol, Espanol, we say things like Año. Okay? So it gives it that extra N sound, almost like in the English onion. So you just put in that invisible N and you should be okay. Then we have the letter P. P, good behaving, no problems there. You know, like on report day, when you go to some teachers and you're like, what's the problem with my child? And when the teachers look at P, they said, but P doesn't give any trouble, P is okay. And there's no problem at all with P. So P sounds like the English P. R, R, again, the only trouble with R is that it likes to roll around a little bit. So it sounds like the English R, but has to be rolled slightly. Then we have our final visitor to the class, our final import into the Spanish alphabet, which is our R. And this is just going to be something that comes with practice. I can't tell you how to roll your tongue. You just have to go back to being a child where you would sit in front of the fan and do that little game. Remember that it's a game, right? Just go back to being a child and you should remember how to roll your tongue. But the first R, the single R, has just a very slight roll. The double R, a very heavier double roll. So it's going to be rolled much stronger than the single R. S, again, good behaving, no problems, parent, no problems, mom, no problems, dad. Apart from a few, in most cases, Sometimes it will sound like a Z, however. And those cases, you just have to look out for it. It tends to sound a little bit like a Z when you have it in front of the letters B. D, G, L, M, N. So S is usually a good student, but when he sits beside B, D, G, L, M, R, N, he's going to have a little bit of a Z sound. So just bear that in mind. T, no problems, no problems. Sounds like your English T. And then our next consonant coming down the line, now V. Now V is a little bit of a controversial one because there's often the school of thought that V is supposed to sound like B or sometimes it's supposed to sound like V. Some persons can get a little bit confused because you're not quite sure if I pronounce a word, you're not quite sure is it that the word has a B or the word has a V. So sometimes what I will do 
is I will start out teaching it sounding like a very soft V and then eventually transition into the B when students become more familiar with the vocabulary so that they will definitely know, okay, this particular word, it sounds like a B, but it's actually a V. But I'm still going to write here, sounds like the English B. That's not a very hard B sound either, just a very soft one. And then we have W. Now W is like K, where it is an exchange student. You don't find a lot of Spanish words that start with the letter W. And any words that you find tend to be words that are borrowed from other languages. And sometimes what will happen with the W is rather than take on a W sound, it will take on the V. All right, and then if it's going to sound like a V with V, it's going to sound like the English B. So you have to be very careful with that. So not many, like, not many words. Sounds like V, which sounds like B. I know that's maybe sounding like a little bit of a merry-go-round, but you'll get it eventually. Don't worry about it. Sounds like V, which sounds like B. And then we have X. X sounds just like your English X. Y sounds just like your English Y. like the English Y. That looks like two separate words. Let's make it a little bit closer. That's what happens when you're trying to write too fast. And then our final, final, final letter is going to be the letter Z, or some persons say Z, but that final letter, Zeta. Um, it usually sounds like an English Z. And you don't find it occurring too, too often. And so, ladies and gentlemen, estudiantes, that is, in a nutshell, what your Spanish letters will sound like when you begin to put your letters into words and you want to know how to pronounce them. That's a nutshell of what they're going to be ending up sounding like. So I just want to thank you for watching this lesson, and I do hope that you learned something and that you will watch the next lesson. Adios.